morning. Please stand as you're and join us in hymn number 623 in your blue hymnal. Good morning. Our, sir, our service begins on page 351 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 351. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We continue on page 356 in your Book of Common Prayer. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 9. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled back away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to, to this day. While the Israelites were camped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening of the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day that they ate the produce from the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Psalm 32. It's on our prayer book, page 624. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt. While I heard, held my tongue, my bones withered away. For your hand was heavy on me that day and night. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in the time of trouble. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my right hand. Do not be like the horse or mule, which have no understanding. You must be patiently faithful to the wise, or else they will not save you in their need. Great are the tribulations of the wicked. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Our second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. From now on, regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ. God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on the behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made us to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Our gradual hymn is hymn number 469 in your hymnal, 
We will sing verses 1 and 2 before the gospel reading and verse 3 after the gospel reading. Hymn number 469, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slave, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called out one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry, and refused to go in. 
His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning again. It's wonderful to be with you today. And today we celebrate a special day in the church, a day called Laetare Sunday. Laetare in Latin means to rejoice. And here's a little bit of church trivia. Laetare Sunday in Lent corresponds with the third Sunday in Advent, known as Gaudete Sunday. These are the two Sundays in the year commonly known as Rose Sunday, and some clergy will wear rose-colored or pink vestments. And if you stick around for the Spanish service, you will notice that the celebrant will be wearing a rose-colored vestment. The color represents a lightning of the penitential season, whether it be Lent or Advent. Lent has been a heavy penitential season, especially with what's going on in our world today. So today, we are at the halfway mark and as we journey through Lent, Laetare Sunday encourages us to stay the course, even if we've fallen off the track a little bit. We are encouraged to keep going as we approach Easter, which is the season of rejoicing. So, there was a man who had two sons. This is how Jesus began the parable in our gospel reading for today. The parable that we know as the story of the prodigal son. It has been suggested that at various points in our lives, we are the father, the prodigal, or the elder son. Have any of you ever identified with one or more of those characters? Can you remember a time when you identified with any of those? Well, over the course of my life, I have found myself as the older brother or sister when my mother openly doted on my youngest brother. My older brothers and I became jealous and really resented him for a time. I've also found myself as the father or mother when one of my sons was lost. And although I did leave home before my parents felt I should have, I was not so much the younger brother, 
since I had no inheritance to squander. In her book entitled Short Stories by Jesus, Vanderbilt University professor of New Testament and Jewish studies, Amy Jo Levine, encourages us to let go of what we have been taught about or read into this parable. To let go just long enough to look at it through a different set of lenses. Some scholars believe the father in the story to be God and see the Pharisees and scribes as the older brother and the sinners the younger brother. Levine challenges us to see this parable as simply a story about a happy dad whose favorite son has returned. A happy dad who seemed to have forgotten that he had two sons. In focusing on the younger son, the father failed to realize that it was the elder son that was truly lost. He was lost in resentment. And resentment is closely related to anger. They are negative feelings towards someone or something that emerge from the past. Resentment is the re-experiencing of past injustices, which could be real or perceived, and the old feelings of anger connected to them. Resentments form when we hold on to that anger. At times, the original cause of the anger that led to resentment may have been forgotten, but the resentment remains. Sometimes the person we hold resentment for are not even aware of our feelings, but we are caught up in mental, emotional, and spiritual bondage. There are no winners with resentment, and in fact, resentment and anger do not only cause spiritual, emotional, and mental damage, they can also affect our physical well-being. Now, the eldest son had ample reason to be resentful. His wayward brother had returned, and there was feasting and dancing in the house, but no one had bothered to invite him in from working in the field. We live in an age of resentment, and some of us can identify with the emotions of the elder brother. He is the good son or daughter, the one sometimes trapped in the role of being the responsible one. He may be a pleaser or somewhat of a perfectionist. He doesn't stray. He stays, the, he plays by the rules, takes pride in what he does, and fulfills his obligations. Then there is that other sibling who is the problem child, yet receives more attention and, in our minds, more love than we do. We, the elder sibling, feel underappreciated and undervalued and become infuriated and, in, and toxic with resentment. So how do we find our way out of our self-imposed prison of resentment? How do we find our way home? The good news is that letting go of bitterness becomes easier with practice. It helps to understand that it is not, it is not something we do for others. Rather, it is something we do for ourselves. But what might work for us is Al-Anon's 12 steps, which help us to know ourselves and take care of ourselves. The steps show us how to make peace with the past so that we can live in the reality of the present. The steps also help us to forgive others as well as ourselves, to love more deeply than before. And the steps help with spiritual growth. Now, towards the end of our parable, the father finally goes out to find his elder son. Just as he went out to welcome his younger son, the father takes the first step to show the elder son his love and affection and to reassure him that everything I have is yours. He reminds his son of the relationship between him and his brother and tries to convince him that the family would not be complete if either, either of them were lost. 
Genesis 25, 9 tells us that Abraham's son, Isaac, and Ishmael were reunited at Abraham's death, and together they buried their father. Jacob and Esau were two sons who also reconciled. And Levine tells us that scripture, the scripture of Israel, gives us hope for the sons in Luke's parable. She states, and I quote, they should give us hope for our own reconciliation in our personal lives and in our world. We need to count not only our blessings, but also those in our families and in our communities. And once we count, we need to act. Finding the lost takes work. It also requires our efforts. And from those efforts, there is the potential for wholeness and joy. And yet our parable remains open-ended. We are not told if the elder brother decides to go inside and celebrate with his father and younger brother. It is left to us to wonder whether his father was able to convince him to finally rejoice at his brother's return or whether he held on to his resentment. We don't know if the younger son truly repented and turned over a new leaf. But I believe that by telling the story, Jesus is suggesting that we too need to decide how we will deal with our resentments. Will we go and join the celebration or will the insult to our sense of fairness overpower our yearning for the forgiveness and joy that lies within the banquet hall? I wonder if we truly listen would we hear the voice of the Father telling us, you are my beloved. You do not need to cling to your anger. Be secure in my love. Love the world generously and allow yourself to be loved in return. Leave resentment outside, the Father says, and join in the celebration of God's extravagant, forgiving, and transforming love for all of us. Friends in Christ, on this Vetare Sunday, my prayer is that our yearning for the love that lies within the banquet hall will overcome any other feelings we might have and propel us to enter the joy of a God who rejoices over the return of every lost child. Amen. Let us continue on page 358 in our Book of Common Prayer with the Nicene Creed. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people on page 388 in your Book of Common Prayers. It'll be Prayers of the People, Form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Here's a prayer for the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. To them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their directions. Above all, we pray for our precious children at risk and in fear that you will hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. This is written, that was written by Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, and Archbishop Stephen Cottrell. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the services of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them. Love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Sean Cantu, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In your prayers, pl please remember Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, our bishops, Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, Father Greg, Reverend Marcia, and for all ministers and people. We pray for the healing of Abigail, Anne, Becky, Jane, hum Humberto, Carla, Aaron, Elias, Anna, Lynn, Mercedes, Josefina, 
for our seniors and for all the families affected by the COVID-19. We, we pray for Rosa, Noah, and the Cantu family. We pray for those with long-term needs, especially Susan, Michael, and Mary Flores, Rebecca, Martha, Yenis, Tina, and Kristen. We pray for Monette, our missionary in Honduras. We pray for the bishops, committee members, Alejandra, Elsa, Erica, Gwen, and Yesenia. Please let us all pray for all our soldiers, especially Ryan and Ashley. Let us also pray for the peace throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Cuba, Haiti, and Nicaragua. Let us all thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for Erica, Eric, Osagueda, and Luis Trujillo, who celebrate their birthdays this week. We also give thanks to God for Yesenia, who offers the cake. We will partake at the birthday celebration this afternoon. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercy, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. Be your gracious, O oh lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for a little bit. I, I learned that um, it's the custom at St. Albans to um, say a birthday prayer for those who celebrate, at the end of the last Sunday of each month, for those who celebrate a birthday in that month. Are any among you celebrating a birthday today? Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that there's some people who are joining us virtually who might be celebrating a birthday. So let us pray for them. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Ashley, Vicky, Maximiliano, Julianne, James, Jose, Joshua, Alejandro, Eric, and Luis, as they begin another year Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell we love you. Aww. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank it's, a, you. it's a joy to be with you. I think you're getting a microphone. Oh. Thank you. Now you can hear me online. <laughs> <laughs>
welcome. And we just did a special thank you for Ken and Marcia for being with us here today and leading our, our service. Well, here's my list of announcements. Uh, don't forget that on April 2nd, which is next Saturday, we have a fish fry. And that'll be happening from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. So come on by and get your fish. And I think it's uh, $10 a plate. And then on April 30th, we have our yard sale along with the pupusa sale. So that'll be an exciting day, and pupusas are always good, so... Come by and see if you find something you need and um, eat some pupusas. And also, if you have anything you want to donate, bring that. But we're kind of trying to stay away from heavy furniture and that kind of stuff. Um, household goods are always nice. And then on May 7th, we're bringing back the lemonade contest. But it's not just going to be the lemonade contest this time. It's going to be a lemon festival. We're going to have some games. Uh, we're going to have um, the usual lemonade contest and best booth contest. But we're adding a lemon dessert contest that anyone can enter. And there'll be trophies for all the prize winners. And then don't forget that we have English prayer services on Tuesday at noon and the Spanish speaking prayer services are Fridays at 6.30 p.m. And don't forget also that we're gonna have cake at about 1.15 to celebrate all the March birthdays so that means all us English folks have a lot of visiting to do to wait for the cake. <laughs> and last but not least, um, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, which is the day that we collect a dollar per person for our capital improvement fund, our long-term capital improvement fund. So bring your dollar and get that um, in the second passing for the capital improvement fund. And with that, I think that is all the announcements. Any questions? Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Glenn. Okay, our offertory stand is number 686 in your Book of Common Prayer, number 686, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
please stand as you're able. Our service continues on page 361 in your book of common prayer with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and, and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the Holy Spirit and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us continue with our post-communion prayer, which can be found on page 365 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as next member of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 690 in your hymnal. Hymn number 690, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Let us bless the Lord.